Are you bored and have nothing to do in your Minecraft world? Well, don't tell anyone, but we've got 30... <laughs> Don't tell anyone, but we've got 30 plus build ideas in this video. If you tell anyone about the sheer amount of builds I'm about to show you, I swear to God. This time around, we've got a huge variety of builds, from a stone quarry and windmill, to pirate ship sizes, and even an underwater greenhouse. And without wasting any more time, let's get into the first build. All right, starting off, we're taking a look at this massive stone quarry build. So if like me in your hardcore world, you need a whole bunch of stone and you wanna like kind of do it aesthetically, you can make this nice build for your quarry, I guess. So starting off with the actual quarry part, we have this nice staircase that goes down in a spiral into our actual quarry, like I just said. And then up here as well, we also have a staircase that leads over to this nice crane design. We've got some storage and some smelting up here as well. Next up, we have this jungle entrance design. This is a really cool build to add to any jungle if you have like a base inside of here or anything like that. Maybe you just want to create like a nice wall that surrounds a jungle. But yeah, so for this, we just have this simple design. Uh, I mean, don't worry about this. Uh, it's incomplete. We have this simple design that's just repeated up until we meet up to the actual gate here, which is just a simple opening. And we have this nice like tiered staircase design thing as well. Next up, we have this massive medieval gatehouse design. So if you want like a really cool entrance to your village or a medieval town of sorts or even like a medieval castle entrance, this is definitely a really nice build for that. So we've got two massive towers on the left and right side. They have these nice inset walls here with some stripped spruce logs and these big fence window things as well. Then over in the center here we have our actual gate section and this also has a nice pathway that uh, I mean, I don't know where the doors went, but uh, yeah, it has a pathway that connects up the towers together as well. Next up, we have this really aesthetic overgrown tower design. This has been made in a way to look like as if it's been like reclaimed by nature. It's got like this massive spiraling spruce tree that goes throughout it and it kind of like sprouts out the sides and then up at the top as well. And I mean, not really a completely useful design, but definitely like a really cool base design or just like a nice aesthetic piece to add to your forest if you have like a base in the area or anything like that. Next up, we're taking a look at four different sizes sizes of ships. The first one here is like a little mini rowboat thing. It's pretty simple to build. All it consists of is these stairs, slabs, and then some trapdoors as well. We've also got a little actual boat inside of there, and then this little sail thing as well. For the next size up, we've actually got somewhat of a little bit of a boat here. We've got an actual like mast with a sail on it. We've got a little bit of decorations around the place as well, and uh, yeah. For the third design, we once again, of course, have a bit of a bigger ship here. This one is actually modeled after the sloop from the game Sea of Thieves. I mean, it's not exactly but uh, it closely resembles it, I guess. And now for the final ship, the biggest one, we have the Brig or the Brigantine, which is also modeled after the Brig from the Sea of Thieves. So this time we've got two big masts, one at the uh, kind of area where you steer the ship and then one towards the center of the ship here. We've also got some like little openings that you can use to go down. And something cool is I've also made that same general ship design into a complete base design as well. So you can find the tutorial for this on my channel. As you can see, if we go down, we have like an actual base in here. We've got storage, crafting, smelting, everything that you could possibly need inside of a nice pirate ship design. Next up, we have this neat windmill design. This is a really nice design to add to any kind of village or medieval town or anything like that. So all it consists of is, of course, just this simple windmill design. But something that makes this really stand out is that we have wheat fields that pretty much just surround the entire area around it, which looks really cool. Next up, we actually have a survival island. This is a really cool video that I did quite a while ago. I did this one in a bit of a cinematic style. So, I mean, feel free to check it out if you want to, but yeah, so we've pretty much just completely redone this entire island by adding in a whole bunch of trees. We've added in some decorations around the place with some logs. We've added in a dock as well. And then as we come up to the actual area over here, we have our tent. We have a little bit of a cabin. We have a mine entrance down over here as well. And then a nice campfire with a seat and some random decorations as well. Next up, we actually have this large wooden bridge design. So if you're in love with spruce wood like I am, this build uses pretty much no stone at all. It's just entirely spruce wood. And we've got some little dark wood accents as well. But yeah, so if you need to cover a really large and high up area, this is definitely a really nice bridge design for that. And then if we come up to the actual bridge design, as you can see, we've got this nice roof section over here. We've got a bunch of lamp posts around the place as well to keep it nice and bright and a whole bunch of decorations too. Next up, we're taking a look at this survival compound base design. This base does have a full tutorial video and tour video on my channel. So be sure to check that out if you're interested. But here, we're just gonna take a very quick look at it. So around the outside, we've got these nice wall designs and some towers as well. At the back, 
back left we have our big main tower where most of our base components are and we also have this nice rift section for the entrance here so if we head on inside as you can see on the outside here we have a whole bunch of stuff we've got storage crafting nether portal smelting as well and then if we head over to the left tower over here we can head up to this is like our decoration kind of area then again we have our storage area and then finally in the very top room we have our bedroom just before we continue on to the next build this episode is sponsored by generations smp have you ever played on a public minecraft server that you invested yourself into for years only for the leadership to throw a tantrum and reset the world or treat you like garbage for no reason then you should check out generations smp the servers are hosted at an actual arcade on powerful hardware that keeps the game running lag free even with high player counts the server is usually protected from bad apples with a five dollar per month subscription but for anybody watching that is interested in this experimental server you can use the partner code disruptive on the generations smp website to receive free access for life with the option to become a supporter for $3.99 a month. Other special features of the server include a player government with real power over staff, a plan to avoid resets by expanding the world, and a creative server where you can test your build designs before spending your resources on them. Speaking of the creative server, I'll be hosting a build competition with the theme Gathering Place. I mean, this could be a park, a town hall, a bar, basically anything where people gather. So be sure to join and create your own design to enter. I'll be choosing the winners on January the 7th at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thanks to Generations SMP for sponsoring this video. Next up, we have this massive medieval bridge design. So it's very similar to the wooden one, except this time we are using wood and stone. So we've got two big arch designs, a big central pillar. Under here, we also have like a nice little hobo den, which is pretty cool. I mean, being homeless isn't cool, but uh, the design's cool. Yeah. You know what I mean. So on the left and right side, we have these nice roofed sections. And then of course we just have the actual like main bridge. We've got a whole bunch of nice decorations around the place to keep it looking nice and interesting. And yeah, so this is actually the pristine variant of this bridge. And we also have a ruined variant, which is this one over here. It does need a bit of a trimming. So uh, please forgive me for that. I haven't been here in quite a while, but uh, yeah, as you can see, this one's just kind of in like uh, floating in the middle of nowhere. So just don't worry about that. Just imagine it's in the same spot as the other one over there. But yeah, so this one's as if it has been like war torn. We've got like big chunks taken out of the roof section over here. This one's a little bit decayed as well. Then in between the bridges, we've got these damaged segments that like you can still use as a normal bridge. You can still just jump over these gaps. So these bridges are still perfectly usable as long as you're okay with a little bit of parkour. Next up, we have this interesting underwater greenhouse design. So as you can see, it's all encased in this nice glass dome. We've added some sea lanterns around the place to keep it nice and bright. And yeah, as we walk in, as you can see, we have this nice big table on the right side or a couple of tables actually, where we've got a whole bunch of pot plants. And then on the left side, we have these little fields with a whole bunch of flowers and azaleas and random stuff as well. Next up, we're taking a quick look at three different aesthetic starter farms. The first one here being, of course, the sugarcane farm. So all this one is, is just the simple sugarcane farm that everyone uses. It's got the observers with pistons below and a redstone line behind all of that. But the thing that makes this interesting is that we've encased it in this nice build. So we've got like a cool roof design. We've got like walls that showcase the entire thing and also showcases the redstone behind there. And then we, of course, have our minecart hopper down here, which collects all of the sugarcane and drops it into this chest down here. For the next aesthetic starter farm, we have this cactus one. So once again, this is just a standard cactus farm in here, but it's all encased in this nice build. And yeah, so all these cactuses just pop off like that down into the water and then down into the chest down here as well. Now for the final aesthetic starter farm, we have this little tower in the nether, which is actually a golden XP farm. So the whole idea behind this one is that you go to the top of this tower up here, you grab out a bow and arrow and you just shoot any of these pigmen and they will all follow you down into the area down below. As you can see, I've already prepared some from earlier. And so you can just come down here, smack them, you get a whole bunch of XP and a whole bunch of gold and other items as well. Next up, we have this weird aesthetic bridge design. This is actually based off of a real bridge that exists. It's called the Devil's Bridge. And I, of course, did put my own aesthetic twist on this. I added a whole bunch of leaves and vines and stuff, and the shape is a little bit different as well. And uh, yeah, it's definitely just a really interesting and unique looking bridge that you could add to your world as it's more of like a circular arch shape instead of just like a straight across kind of thing, you know? Next up, we're taking a look at a couple of different town entrance designs. The first one here being the medieval design. So as you can see, we've got a little mini gatehouse here, kind of like a mini version of the one that I showcased previously in this video. And then to the left and right of that, we also have this neat wall design. So this is like an entire package. So you could just build this gate and then you can repeat this wall as far as you need to go to surround your entire village. And now for the second town entrance design, we have a more wooden, kind of more primitive one where we have these palisade walls on the left and right side. And then we have this nice little gate as well. Next up, we have this tiered farm 
farm design. And this build also has a full tutorial video on my channel, so be sure to check that out if you want to build this for yourself. So as we enter, as you can see, we're on the first layer here where we have a whole bunch of wheat. Something cool about this is that we have a single water source on the left and right side, and this flows down and powers pretty much all of the farms on every layer, which is pretty cool. So yeah, now we can head up the ladder at the back here up to the second floor where we have our main storage area. We can also head through this door here and also through the water out to our farms on the second floor. And then we can head up the ladder once again, all the way up to the third tier where we have our spuds. Next up, we're taking a look at a couple of watchtower designs. So these have been designed for you to encase like a snow golem inside of here. And these would be used to like defend your area against creepers or mobs or whatever. So the first one here is the evil design. So we've primarily used deep slate and also warped wood over here as well for the accents. And uh, yeah, just like a really cool tower design, I guess. For the next tower, we have the medieval design. And something cool about these is you can actually just use these as regular towers as well. You don't really have to put snow golems in here. And yeah, for this one, we've also added a nice little flag design up here and then a whole bunch of decorations. We've got like some encased plants and then this nice window design as well for the golems. Or you could just replace this with like a fence and it would be a nice window design as well. Next up, we have the wooden medieval themed tower. So this one is, uh, yeah, pretty much entirely wood except for these little stone brick walls in the corners. And uh, yeah, once again, just a really cool tower design. If you prefer more of a wooden theme instead of stone for your medieval stuff. And now for the final tower, we actually have a ruined one. So maybe you have a town that is like maybe half war torn or it's completely ruined or anything like that. This would definitely be a really cool tower design to add to that. And as you can see, we've also added in a little bit of a campsite in here as if people have moved in. I've explained this a couple of times now, but I really love doing that for my ruined theme builds. It just adds a little bit of extra life to them. Next up, we're taking a look at a couple of different crossroads designs. The first one here being like a spruce medieval themed one. So yeah, all of these are going to have this like plus shaped of road. This is kind of like an intersection and uh, like some nice designs that you would add to it, I guess. So yeah, for this first one, we are using andesite, gravel, stone bricks, and mossy stone bricks, and mossy cobblestone, and coarse dirt in the pathway. So this is a pretty uh, multicultural pathway we've got going on here. We've got a nice campsite over on the side here, a nice rock design with a lantern on top of that, and then a couple of bushes on the other sides as well. For the next crossroads, we have another medieval themed one, but this one's a little bit more simplistic compared to that one. So firstly, we've got a lamppost design on this side. We've got a nice custom tree over here, a little bit of a storage pile, and a wheelbarrow design over here, and then just a simple rock design on this side. For the next crossroads, we have a nether themed one. So this one's using primarily blackstone stuff for the road. And then we've got a nice custom little warped forest in every single corner. And then also a little bit of a lava lake over here too. And now for the final one, we have a desert themed crossroads. So over here, we have a little bit of an oasis design with a custom azalea tree. And then pretty much in every single side, we've got like a little bit of stone, some dead bushes and some cactuses as well. Be sure to let me know in the comments down below which one was your favorite. And also be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.